So we are at, we are at. Marcus, hold my hand. <laughs> We're at Bruma right now. We're here on the north end of the valley by the Guadalupe. Look at the views behind us. It's amazing. Marcus, how many elevation, how much elevation have we climbed? <laughs> So it is up a little bit because you're climbing to the top of the tasting room. What you're looking at right here is actually the top of the tasting room, the ceiling. That's a 400 year old oak tree or so that they got off the property. It was dying dead. And that water right there is actually an insulation barrier to the tasting room. So we're actually standing actually on top of the official tasting room. The glass windows you see right there are the VIP tasting room which is where we go uh, to taste wine today and there with winemaker Lulu, the famous Lulu who has come to the valley originally from Ensenada, went to France, learned how to make wine, worked at a very famous chateau there in Margot, and came back to Mexico, to this region here, and has taken on several projects since she's been back. She is the winemaker here and consults at other places. Yes, this is rattlesnake land. We've been here several times throughout the valley and I've not seen one yet. So now we're walking to the back side of the tasting room. Or actually to the entrance. So we go down a little bit so we can walk to the, uh, to the main door of the tasting room. This is probably one of the most iconic tasting rooms here in the valley. A lot of famous people come here. We just missed Milt Gibson the time we were here before. Just missed him by a day or so. And it's the way that's set up. Uh, Bruma is owned by eight different uh, friends from Mexico City. Bruma actually translates into wind. The wind that actually comes off of the Pacific Ocean that comes into the valley is called the Bruma. Bruma, this winery, uh, sits on the very north end of the valley on the way into Tecate, not far from Tecate. There's our tasting room right there, the VIP room. You can look out at the oak tree again out there. And this is where we're gonna sit down to do our tasting. Lulu's gonna join us and so is the importer, Tom, who is the uh, Mexican wine expert here in the United States, Tom Bracamontes. And they're gonna join us here for this beautiful view. A lot of great wine and a lot of great laughs. The conversations we have with Lulu here are very, very um, intense. She's a very passionate winemaker. She knows what she's doing and she's very well respected. So uh, there's a lot uh, Lulu has to say. So, first of all, you're gonna have some olive oil from the trees around here in the property. Breast here. Also, some bread from the region. And in the case of the cheeses, the ones that are uh, these ones, this, for fresh. example, is it's a fresh it's a cheese, but it's a goat cheese. Oh, nice. So it's got almond in it. And this one has pistachio. Uh, they're made out in, uh, in Mexico here in this case, southern Mexico. And if you would have a style of a camembert kind of a mm. cheese, but also made in Querétaro in this case. And at the very last, with the triangle cheese, we have cow milk cheese and a parmigiano reggiano style of procedure with the cheese. But made yes, a question again, Jim. What's the one thing you would want people to know about one? It's very important. My answer is going to be That's okay, important. that's good. But it's the truth. My dad once told me the, you know, if the most important thing about someone is if they like wine or not. If they like wine, it's people that enjoy living. They're gonna love food, friends, music, culture, and life. So if whenever you get married, honey, just you know, choose a man that likes wine because that's a good man. And what, what I've learned now working in wine is that the best thing about my job is this, is what wine, produces, induces you to the talk that you have, the, the food that you have, the moment that you share. It's not about what you have in the glass, it was, it's what makes what it makes happen around you. And, it's and the it's sun true. is making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, no? It's, the sun's making me no, cry. No, the sun's making but me it's cry. True, <laughs> and that's why that's we why love the, the wine trips. We love yeah. 
the friends, the people, the relationships that we've built over the last 18 years, we absolutely love that. The, the, I mean, the, the other day I looked at our, at our wine rack, the other day, well, yeah. and I looked, and I said, every bottle on that shelf represents a story. And we've been of this, of this, of this, right, of this, a room yeah. like this. Yeah. Every bottle on our list represents a story. And, and that's the important thing, you know, yeah. that wine makes things happen, you know, and conversations and moments, and that's the best thing about wine. Especially rosé. <laughs> 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 and I think you agree with that. I mean, in Mexico, that's very... I wouldn't even throw this out in the 40s. <laughs> and then the whites are all about flowers, and then the aromas that we have in the valley, and then the red is about the animals that we have in the valley. So every label has kind of those okay. difference. Okay. Okay. That's for color. So the real rosé is amazing. But in the, in the glass, it's tough, you know? It's like barely rosé. Ooh, I love it. I love that, right? Oh, wow. This is delicious. The thing, and she, what you wow, just talked about that is one. that prior to, not prior to Lou coming back, but there was a big movement where people were going for the high like sugars. That? When you do that, your acids fall, your city, your pH is fall. So people were playing around with tartaric acid to reacidify the wines. And that was the way wines were made here. Get the sugars, get big alcohols, and then we'll throw some more tartaric acid to give it that love freshness, that one. right? Lulu came back, started picking six to eight weeks before everybody else. They thought she was nuts until they taste these fresh. Yeah, which you are. Yeah, so not because of that. <laughs> but this is but okay. So without putting you on the spot, though, you kind of brought this style forward. Yeah, which is really cool because we did have all of our rosés very kind of bougainvillea colored rosés and very tannic and very sweet and they were kind of strawberry and jamish and. Uh, so um, now we're all making, oh, a lot of people are making softer, more elegant, more subtle, more acidic rosés. Guess what? That's what a rosé has to be. I'm going to be able to drink rosé with my buddies just because I'll be like, listen, right? I was in the Valley de Guadalupe. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned all about it. And I drank, uh, Try it out, fellas. Right from the yeah, tank. <laughs> tend to be a lot lower. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. You're okay. able, I mean, you can drink it. You can drink it every day. I mean, that's why I look at it any season because it has a lot of red characteristics, but white characteristics too. So it's a nice comment. I love rosé. This is an 11.8% alcohol. I love it. If anybody wonders where 20 cases disappear a year, it's my mother. Really? It's like, she's like the biggest fangirl of Yeah, no, Lulu. that's yummy. It's like, Mijo, just grab another bottle of that rosé. That's my favorite. Or just, okay, mom, whatever you want. What's really funny, in Mexico, of course, we're very macho, right? So Have men are like, it? oh, yeah, rosé is right. like for, for girls or my wife. or And I love these like really Mexican, you know, yeah. that wow. are like 60, 50 yeah. year old, very traditional, and they're like, I love your rosé. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like that's because the young girls like the rosé. <laughs> <laughs> All the yeah, old exactly. guys yeah. like the rosé. <laughs> <laughs> you get along with the young girls. <laughs> in, in a subtle way than when you age it. So I don't age with oak. I ferment with oak, with new states of French oak. And this is a result. It does have just you know a little bit of them. So you have this kind of sweet tannin in there, but it's not vanilla, cocoa, it's not too intense. So it adds a little bit of depth to the wine, but it doesn't take anything out of the juiciness of vinegar. So I am a huge fan. I'd much rather vinify or ferment with new staves than use old barrels to age wines in. So I think this is the way that what, you know. What constitutes go. an old barrel? Three, four use. Three, four barrels. uses. Yeah. But a stave is just the wood. It's just the just before the, yeah. actually building the barrel, the barrel but right. it's new. But it's been toasted and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So are they using in wine? Are they using like the square? Uh, Cement? No, no, no. So like in the brewery business, when the, like when they're making um, sours and things like that now, mm -hmm. they'll build a wood instead of a barrel. It's harder to ferment in a barrel because of the, the shape, from yeah. what I understand. Because you can't put the yeah. grapes in. Yeah, and so they'll use these, they build a box on those, yeah. or they'll just filter through mm -hmm. the oak. Okay. I just put the stays in the okay. actual tank. In the tank. There's chains that you can yeah. um, 
uh, put in the barrel so you keep the staves down. Yeah. Gotcha. Or um, cheesecloths, cheese huge, yeah. it's not actually cheesecloths, but it's huge yeah. cheesecloths that you, when you close the, the um, door of the barrel, you it's kind of... It's connected, right? Yeah. yeah. How much do you hate old barrels? You should be very, you should be more expressive. I know, I know. That's what you really think. No, it's just, it I feel people are like proud of it. Yeah. And I just don't get it. Like, why, why do you think, proud? why do you think they're proud of it? Is it because of, because it's a barrel? Because, because it's a aging. barrel, it doesn't matter in how old it is. It's a barrel. Because it's, it's aging it's in a barrel. barrel. Right, right. But why would I want to age in a barrel that has served five different vintages or four different vintages with God knows what bacteria yeah. or yeast? The the pores start of the of the wood start being clogged with tartaric acid, yeah, with skins, yeah. with bacteria, with everything. So why would you rather use that than a perfectly healthy, clean new stave in a tank? It's very psychological. Yeah. It's just because barrel they aging it. seems romantic, yeah. seems yeah. Uh, upscale, yeah. which is not. I don't. I only use. It was marketed. I only use barrels that are new for our uh, um, uh, Ocho, which is our premium wine, or one year old, and then they're out, and that's it. I wouldn't use them in our Plan B or another other wine because then it's, I, I don't understand what value it makes, and, and I don't know if you've tried because of those pictures of all the barrels, and because it's because amazing. it's what it's what yeah. we're what what we think. It should be right. Exactly. Yeah. And and I don't know if you've tried wines that are that seem very um, dry. They have like this very dry, astringent, non-balanced tannins. That's old barrels. After three, four, you can talk to a cooper. After three, four years, the the tannins become very harsh. Why would I want? I wonder why you upset so many people. Oh, your opinion, you have your opinion, right? And, and, and you're, well, she listen, has my opinion, your no, I, I'm married to an opinion guy, so it's all good. <laughs> I totally opinion? understand. Who's got opinions for all of them? I always have to try to tone it down, but I can't. Yeah, yeah that's... You don't need to, though, because that's what makes you successful at what you're doing. Oh, you should doing, see her right? immediately, though. So, so much fun. Well, okay, tell me the same thing now. I want to do this on video. <laughs> What? And I don't need to tone things down. No, but I'm not married to her. <laughs> yeah. I'm not married to her. I don't have to go home and listen to everybody bitch about my husband. To me. <laughs> right? Like, okay. <laughs> there you go, honey. That, that's the, the answer. I can edit that so it's going to flow better. Of course it will. <laughs> everybody wants him to be mayor in our town.